Hi, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jojo, a designer and audiophile, and Tumi is here. Today's video is pretty different. I want to bandwagon a bit on the hottest stuff right now, Marvel's Loki series on Disney+. Plus. In episode 2, we first see the office of Judge Ravona Renslayer. Oh, and there is not gonna be spoilers, so don't worry, it's still a channel about you know, vinyls and audio stuff. In the office, for a split second, we saw a wall of a built-in stereo system. For a design junkie and audiophile like me, I have to know what are those. So let's take a look on what is the stereo system choice of the timekeepers and how they possibly hook it up or can they hook it up? Okay, that's about right. For a high budget show like Loki, the effort put into the production design is simply amazing. We can see the interior of Renslayer's office and the TVA are heavily inspired by the 60s and 70s. If we put the style into buzzwords, I would say, you know, space age, retro modern, and retro futurism and some Cold War spices here and there. This should be the main direction for the production design. If you want to see me talk more about other designs, styles, and items in the series or other shows, let me know in the comments. The stereo system we see in the shot is composed of four units, and the era they are from matches with the inspiration of the interior design. Kudos to the design team. Oh, and there are so many model numbers and series, believe me, it's confusing. If there are some minor mistakes, bear with me, please. So on the top right, we have either an SA8500 Mark II or SA8800 Mark II by Pioneer. These two integrated amplifiers share the same faceplate but have different specs. An integrated amplifier is a combination of preamp and amp. If you are not familiar with what this means, check out my audio 101 videos here. Basically, an integrated amp is similar to a receiver. It powers your speakers and can take in different sources. Really convenient. The 8800 Mark II in the show, released in 1976, is mid or mid-high level in the lineup from the golden age of Pioneer. The retail price is 59,800 Japanese yen. If convert the price to USD plus inflation, it will be about 990 USD today. In 1980, Pioneer released another SA8800 amplifier, adding the iconic blue line screen and introduced their new, more efficient non-switching technology and switch the 8800 to a class AB amplification. The 8800 also has a really nice phono stage for us vinyl lovers. It has two sets of phono inputs and can set different impedance and low to match with various cartridges. On top of those, 8800 also came with both pre-out and amp-in function. So that means you can either use it as a preamp or only use it as an amplifier in your system flexible and nice function that only higher-end models are equipped with. On the second-hand market, the 8800 Mark II range from $300 to $900. It varies a lot, depends on conditions and where you buy it. Nevertheless, a pretty handsome looking unit. Under the SA8800, we have a Marantz. It is a Marantz 1090 console stereo amplifier. It is also an integrated amplifier, so we have a double here in our system chain. The 1090 model was released in 1977, retail for 240 USD. After inflation, it is about 1,074 USD today. It is also the mid-level of Marantz integrated amplifier lineup at the time, outputting 45 watts at 8 ohms or 57 watts at 4 ohms to each channel. 45, 45, a total of 90 watts for both. 1090 and 90 watts. Generally, this is how Marantz naming their units. Pretty cool, right? The connectivity of the 1090 is similar to the Pioneer. Two phono inputs, two tape input, one for tuner and one for auxiliary. Pre-out and main name function are presented. And 1090 also has a trigger function similar to the Pioneer. Since the 1090 doesn't have the signature look, the Marantz receiver that people are just obsessed with. The price for them on the secondhand market isn't as crazy. You can find one listing around $300 easy or a restored one for like probably $500 ish. Beneath the 1090, we have another Marantz unit. It is the Marantz EQ10 stereographic equalizer. 
releasing in 1981. It is the youngest unit we have here. EQ was pretty popular in the 80s, but less popular nowadays since people prefer a more natural sound without messing with the signal. It is in the 100 to 200 bucks range on the vintage market. Not essential to the system, but it is a cool look. The last thing we have here is an Akai reel to reel on the left. It is the only source we see in the system of TVA. No vinyl, no cassette, just reel to reel. Real classic. Tracking down the model for this one took me quite some time. It is the Akai 202D SS, a four track reel to reel recorder released in 1973. The cool thing about the 202D is that it is a quadraphonic system. This means it has four channel outputs to create a 4.0 surround sound system. A popular trend in the 70s, and since we have four channels, we also have four VU meters. Who doesn't love the dancing VU meters? The price for them on the secondhand market is around 200 bucks or so. If you're into reel to reel, go check it out. Next, if we want to hook up all four units for the TVA, it will be something like this. The signal source would be the Akai reel to reel. Then we feed the stereo signal to the Pioneer or the Marantz. Since they are both integrated amplifier and both having pre-out and amp in, we can mix and match to find a flavor that Josh Rensselaer likes. Or we can do it quadraphonic style, assigning two channels to each of the Marantz and Pioneer. Then we have the equalizer. Since it only takes a stereo signal, we should put it with the front left and front right channel. Therefore, it can tune to the preferred flavor. And there you have it. The sound system choice of the TVA is pretty modest for a place that is beyond time and space. The look of the system perfectly matches with the 70s influence interior design since most of the units are from the same era. And I do really want to hear it. And there was no speaker shown in the shot. What a pity. If you want to see me dig into more movies or TV shows items, designs, styling or so, leave a like and comments. And don't forget to subscribe, turn on the bells, all the good stuff. That helps the channel a lot. That's it for today, and we'll see you next time. Peace. And yeah, Loki is a really good show. It is really sweet for design junkies like us. Really sweet. <laughs>